Yes, I'm resplendent and he's looking today, Clive. Um, we've been drilling down in numbers. It looks like a sizable majority for Emmanuel Macron, doesn't it? 66% of the vote. But actually, when you look at the numbers, 20 million voted for him. But a little deeper in those numbers, 11 million for Marine Le Pen, and then there's 16 million on top of that who either didn't come to the polls at all or cast a blank ballot. So you put all those together and you see that there's still a fair bit of division here in France. So we thought we'd explore a bit of that this evening. We've got right and left with us. Let's start with David Giraud. Uh, he's from France Saint Soumise. Uh, that's Jean -Luc Mélenchon's party of the hard left. And also Ludivine de la Rochère. She's president of Manif pour tout, or Protest for All, which was a big movement in 2013 when François Hollande um, legalized gay marriage. Yes. So you count a lot of Catholics within your number, Ludivine. Uh, I would imagine they were pretty torn over this vote. Um, this vote was very complicated for all our um, friends uh, because uh, they know that Macron wants to go on with um, uh, Macron's, uh, with Hollande's policy against family and against the respect of children's rights to have a father and a mother. So it was so hard for Catholic to to decide uh, if they will uh, vote or not for uh, Hollande, for uh, Macron, sorry. Yes. Half <laughs> for the bishops as well. In fact, uh, the Jewish faith, Islam, they signed a letter yes. urging people to and vote for Macron, but the bishops didn't. Yes, the, the bishops didn't say anything and they let uh, any person to decide. And I think it was a good thing, of course. There's still many Catholics in France that take their instructions from the bishops? No, they don't take the instructions at all. Uh, but they may, it, may help them, it may help them in their uh, reflection before mm. the vote. Uh, but finally, we know that um, uh, the more people are Catholic, the more they go to the mass, I mean, the less they voted for, for Marine Le Pen. Ah, for the right, for the yes, far right. Yes. Oh, in interesting. And the less they are religious, mm -hmm. the more they voted for Macron. But it was not really their choice because uh, uh, on these uh, family matters is so in contradiction with uh, what they defend for family and yeah. uh, for uh, right, for justice. And what about you, David? Seven million people voted for Jean-Luc Mélenchon on the hard left. He did very well in the first round of the vote. Where did they go in the second round? Uh, at the second round, we had one third of, the, of our people that, uh, because we consulted them, uh, that voted for Macron, and one third that did not vote for anyone on, uh, for the blank ballot, and one, another third that did not even vote. Mm. So um, we wanted to let everyone uh, express their feelings, uh, because the, the thing is, uh, people on Macron uh, said, uh, if you vote for me, uh, it's because you agree uh, to me. And we say, no, no way, that, that's no way. So we wanted everyone not to be humiliated by their choices. And, and we are pretty proud uh, that we organized that, actually, because Macron won, uh, I, I voted for Have Macron. you ever known an election like this, both of you, where you just didn't feel you could vote no, for either the, candidate? The choice between uh, Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron was especially hard. And for a Catholic, for example, uh, Le Pen is uh, against migrants and she wants to stop any migrations and to stop uh, many subventions, allocations for migrants people and it is, uh, it is uh, the contrary of the Catholic values. But on the other side, for family, Macron is against our values and that wa that's why it was so hard mm. to choose. Mm. And on the left? Uh, for me, uh, actually, uh, in, in my head, it was like, okay, there's someone pulling a gun in my head, it's Marine Le Pen, and someone poisoning me slowly. So first, let, <laughs> let's expel uh, away the, the one that, uh, that's uh, sweetening, sweetening me uh, with a weapon, and then I, I, will, uh, I will fight. But don't you my, both see some excitement in this? You've got a 39-year-old president, he's got fresh ideas, he wants to bring new people into parliament, new faces. Well, it Surely will that's be, something to admire, isn't it? It will be very hard. Uh, we must have in, uh, in head that he has been elected with less than half of the voices of the electors. Uh, of the whole electors, the abstention and the um, uh, white uh, votes, sorry, I don't know in English, uh, are black huge. Votes. Yeah. Black yeah. votes yeah. are huge, absolutely yeah. huge. So he's elected because people didn't want uh, to have Marie Le Pen. Uh, but now he will have to gather to unite everybody, France. You talk about fresh ideas. I'd like to know which ones. Because. <laughs> 
all, all the things he says, I'm, I'm listening that since I'm born, actually. I'm 24 and I'm, I've always listened to all that stuff. It's exactly the same as before. Yes. So I'd like to know which side is afraid. Because we have, I have a strong disagree with, uh, with Madame de la Rochelle. The thing is how you organize this disagreement. And our whole campaign has been built around the idea that uh, we need a new republic because we need uh, something fresher and, and to, to have strong disagrees, but uh, okay. not in chaos. Okay, we're out of time. Thank you both very much indeed for yeah. your time. So that's a fairly good example, isn't it, Clive, of the division that there is in the country. Emmanuel Macron certainly has the power, but can he wield it effectively in the weeks ahead? Indeed. Christian, many thanks for that. Christian Fraser there. Impact.